Adult Sunday School Leader. I hope you're having a great week so far. Last Saturday night here in the Whitehall, Arkansas area, we had a tremendous hailstorm, which kind of worked into last week's lesson right after the plagues and, uh, and the Red Sea, and we got to talk about hail a little bit. But anyway, if you remember, we're in this unit entitled God Is, and we've looked so far at God being our provider, God being our healer, and this week, we're in Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 16, looking at God is our banner. Now, that's a little odd, isn't it? That's kind of an odd title. You know, we know God provides, God heals, God's our peace, He's our righteousness. We know these things, but God is our banner. That's kind of an odd title for, for God, isn't it? Well, let's remember uh, what, what we're looking at this week. We're looking at the story of when the Israelites fought the Amalekites, and Moses uh, lifted his hands up, and had, as long as the hands were up, the Israelites were winning. Whenever his arms got tired and the, and the staff was lowered and his arms lowered, uh, then the Amalekites were winning, and so it was kind of a back-and-forth thing. So who are the Amalekites? Well, we can look back in Genesis, and we can see that uh, Amalek was the grandson of Esau. And so these, this tribe of people, this group of people, descended from Esau and Esau's grandson. So, like I said, Joshua and the Israelite army fought against the Amalekites. Moses is up on the hill. Like I said, hands up, we're winning. Hands lowered, the Amalekites are winning. But it's not just his hands that were in the air. He was holding something. What was that? He was holding his staff. But it's interesting, Moses calls it God's staff or the Lord's staff. Why would he do that? Why would he call it God's staff when it was his staff? Well, we, we can look back at those plagues uh, when the Nile was turned to blood, when the frogs came, when the hail came, when he parted the Red Sea, and he took that staff in his arm and outstretched his arm. And this was, this was showing God's power. And so Moses realized and was telling the Israelites, it's not me, it's not this staff, it's, it's really God that's doing all this. Now here's something you may or may not want to do in your class, depending on your class makeup and all that. You might have somebody who thinks they're really strong and get up, you know, somebody who doesn't mind getting up in front of people. And uh, I was going to say a penny, but I've got a dime. And a dime is, of course, much smaller than a penny. And just have put that penny or put that coin in their hand. Now that's not very light, very heavy, is it? It's pretty light. How long do you think you can hold that? You can hold that forever. You can hold it better in my pocket. But what if you just take it out your arm and stretch it out? How, how long can you hold it? Okay. You might have them stand over on the side while you continue teaching your lesson and see, even right now, of course, I'm not in very good shape, but uh, my arm's starting to get kind of tired, right? And so it's not going to take too long before it, it's not the heaviness of the dime but it's just my arms are getting tired. And I know whenever I work on like a ceiling fan and I'm trying to do some electrical work, I hold my arms up just for a minute or two and my arms are tired. Well, see, that, that's what Moses ran into. He's holding that staff up. That staff's not heavy, but his arms are getting heavy. So what, what happened? Well, you had two other guys. You had Aaron, who was Moses' brother, and uh, Hur, H-U-R, and together they were on either side of him and they set Moses down on a rock and kept, uh, helped him prop his arms up. Now, th this all sounds like a, a fantastic story, doesn't it? You know, as long as the staff is up, the, the Israelites are winning. Whenever the staff is lowered and his arms get tired, the, the Malachites win. It sounds pretty fantastic. So, was this staff that magical, that powerful? You know, this is the staff that turned into a snake and, and uh, picked it up by the tail. It became a staff again. What are we to make of all this? To me, it's, it's not that the staff is magical. That's not it at all. To me, this is a, a, a visual living parable for Israel to remember. That the battle in life, especially spiritual battles, the battle is on the hill, not in the field. And what do I mean by that? We've heard the term uh, people use in church that, you know, I, I was just doing things in my own strength and I wasn't relying on the Lord. Well, they're facing that battle on the field. They're not relying on the strength of God. You, you see, it, at least in my opinion, I, th I think the Christian life is a joint effort. Yes, it, in a way it's all God, 
That's true, but it, it's a joint effort of heaven and earth. It's, it's a partnership. Um, I realize I can't do anything on my own. If it's just the Israelites down there battling the Amalekites, they're going to get wiped out. But yet I have a responsibility. The Israelites just didn't sit back and say, well, God, take care of the fight. No, they didn't do that. They were fighting. They have a responsibility. So it's, it's, a, it's a joint effort. It's a partnership. I am, the Israelites were, a vehicle in which God's power can flow through and his will gets accomplished, okay? You've, you've, I know you've heard the saying that you want to pray like it's all dependent upon God and act like or work like it's all dependent upon you. So there's that joint partnership of relying on God, being sensitive to his spirit, and then working as hard as you can to, to, to help accomplish that will. To me, it's kind of like an electrical fan. It does a good job of stirring the air, but it's got to be plugged in to the wall. It has to be plugged into the power source in order to operate. By itself, it's nothing. The electricity is great. It's the power, but it, it needs to be, it needs to come together in order to do that. Now, that's really not the best analogy because when we think about God, God could have just wiped out the Amalekites on his own. He doesn't normally choose to do that. Normally, it's a joint effort of a, a, a partnership. Well, we in verse 14, it talks about uh, God instructed Moses to write these things down, to remember them. And I know as I get older, it's, it's very important to write things down because I think I'm going to remember things. In fact, I'll think of something I think is a great Sunday school illustration, and if I don't write it down, it's gone. Okay, Write it down, not just for you, but for generations to follow, for us thousands of years later, to read and to, to learn from this experience. And God says here in verse 14 that he's going to blot out the, the name of uh, Amalek. We see that's not an immediate thing, do we? Because they, are, they continue to be a thorn in Israel's side for generations. You see, God's promises are not always fulfilled for you to see. And, and, and we are very impatient people. And when we feel God's promise to something, uh, that something's going to happen, it may not be in our lifetime. And that's what happened here with God's promise to blot out the name of, of um, Amalek. So we get down to verse 15, and Moses builds an altar to the Lord to celebrate what the Lord had done, not what Israel had done, but what the Lord had done. And he called, it, called that place Jehovah or Yahweh Nisi, the Lord is my banner. What is a banner? It's a, it's, a, it's a physical symbol. It's a rallying point. It, it identifies a unified group, uh, a unified group of people. If you remember, you know, just a few weeks ago, we had the Winter Olympics, and in the opening ceremonies, the countries would come out uh, individually, and each country, there's a guy in the front, a gal in the front, carrying a flag. That was their rallying point. It identified them as a cohesive unit, uh, of their country. That's why I have old glory here beside me, just as a, as a visual reminder. And if you've got a flag, you might want to put that in your classroom just as a, a visual symbol this, uh, this Sunday. Now, flags or banners carry with it emotion. You know, um, we can see old glory get mistreated, and that, that brings out the emotion in, in a, lot of us, uh, a lot of us Americans. But, you know, in church, we also have other banners as well. Do you have a Christian flag on stage? It identifies the group here as Christians, right? What about on maybe on Wednesday night or Sunday night, you may have an Awana program, and there's an Awana flag or a Cubby flag that uh, identifies that group as Awana uh, children. Like I said, an, a, a banner, a flag, can carry with it a lot of emotion, either positive or negative, like the American flag, or you think about the Confederate flag, and and the, uh, the emotion that that has stirred up in recent years. Okay, so uh, it, it's not just a piece of material, right? It carries with it a lot of emotion and uh, representation and symbolism. So in our story today, God is our banner. The Lord is our banner. The Lord, and we think the Lord is our flag. No, the Lord is the, com the, the, thing that, the person that we identify ourselves with. He's our rallying point. And as the um, Israelites were fighting that war 
with the Amalekites. And if, whenever they looked up on the hill and they saw Moses holding up that rod, even though it wasn't a flag, it was a rod that was that was kind of like a banner. It was it was what it reminded them of who they were and their connection with God. And so that's God is our banner. The Lord is our banner. Now, like I said earlier. Uh, the Amalekites were not immediately defeated. In fact, the very end of our text, uh, the very last verse there, it says the Lord will be against the Amalekites for, from generation, for generation to generation. One last thought here. Let's look to God as our banner and for, for our ultimate victory. All right, we may not see, like I said, we may not see the, the, promise, uh, the promises carried out exactly in our lifetime, but the ultimate victory is is his so god is our banner he is he is whom we rally under he's whom we get uh, encouragement from he's uh, carry the thought of god being our banner carries with it a lot of emotion all right that's what i've got for you this week hope you have a great class and uh, don't forget to pray for him